Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't seen the news lately, everybody's talking about a recession. It's coming, it's already here, it's gonna be here, the world's gonna end, typical news stuff. And this week we asked ourselves, are we ready for one? Is it even gonna impact us? Are we afraid? As small business owners, a recession right now might hit us harder than anything else we've ever experienced. So what are we doing? I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to follow what IBM, GE, and Procter & Gamble did when they first started out as small businesses. One Glowforge is still out of commission. You'll see that in another video, but we're down to one Glowforge. So thankful we have a backup. And we got five boards to fulfill. Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. So after posting last week's video, we got a ton of questions from you guys asking us, what are we gonna do about the impending recession? And so then we decided we would ask ourselves, what are we doing about the impending recession? We've seen a lot of growth in the last year. I mean, that's when we started the business, it was about a year ago. And we've already been able to move into this big commercial warehouse. We have been super blessed with how fast our businesses have grown. But with the threat of an incoming recession, we're wondering, are we gonna be able to pull through? So what is a recession? I had to Google it, I'm not that smart. A recession is complicated. It's really hard to define, but it basically is exactly what you think it is. It's a, it's a period of time where the economy is bad for a lot of people. And there's a thousand different ways and a ton of different metrics that economists and other smart people define what is a bad economic time. But that's basically it. It's just things are expensive, people don't have money, people are scared. Um, all of that is a recession. So while we're worried about losing the profits in our business, one thing we're not worried about losing is all of our equipment and fancy tools. Thanks to today's sponsor, Simply Safe. Simply Safe protects your home or business around the clock 24 seven. Every door, every window, every room. We trust both our business and our home to Simply Safe security. We were so worried when we first moved in that it was gonna take forever to set up a security system, but we had secured our entire 4,200 square foot warehouse in just about 30 minutes, start to finish, from the first box being opened to having the app finished, downloaded, and arming it for the first time. That's the fastest our mind has ever been put at ease with anything in our business. We set up another system in our home and it was just as fast the second time. With a comprehensive set of cameras and other sensors, you can always know what's going on inside your home. And that's the best part, is that we can control everything right from our phone. With the Simply Safe app, we can arm and disarm our system, as well as monitor our cameras from anywhere in the world. And that's super helpful when we're gone chasing hurricanes and we need to have our friend put the mail in the house or pick up a package for us. I can see everything on the cameras and buzz them in, no problem. Simply Safe protects over a million homes in the US alone, and you can save 20% on a Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month for free. Just visit simplysafe.com slash Jenny and Davis to learn more. So our current business model is to build cutting and charcuterie boards for business owners that want to maintain a really good relationship with their clients. That's why we engrave the customer's name on the front and the business owner's name on the back. 
And that's been working really well for mortgage brokers, realtors, anybody who wants to maintain client relationships. But we're finding out that this will also work in a ton of different industries. Doctors, lawyers, apartment complexes, wealth management. I honestly cannot keep up with all the new ideas I constantly have for new markets. And I am just so busy trying to hire more salespeople to help me do it. There is so much money out there for this, for, for what we're doing. Oops. So not only are we trying to hire salespeople, but these boards aren't even our full business. We want to be building kitchen tables. These boards are honestly just a way for us to market our business by getting our names in people's homes. So in the background, we're prototyping all of the bigger furniture we want to do while also trying to take advantage of the opportunity and the money that we've found with these boards. So can this young, newly started business survive a recession? If a recession is about to come and hit us right in the mouth, we have a decision to make. Do we board up the windows and hunker down and hope that the recession passes over us without doing too much damage? Or on the other hand, do we evacuate? Do we close the business down and hope to reopen once the economy's better again? Well, we think there's a third option. And this third option is what we teach in our content. It's what we sell in our programs. It's what we talk about all the time in the stud stack. It's really the foundational principle for this business that we've started here. And we're not that smart. We learn this principle from books. I remember when I was on active duty in the Air Force, I had a lot of time to read. That's not to say military officers are lazy, but, but due to the nature of my job, I had a lot of downtime. See, I was a nuclear missile operator. You know the guys in the movies that are sitting in the underground bunker waiting on the president's call to launch the nukes? That was my job. We were on shift, sometimes up to 72 hours. We had no phones, no computer, nothing to keep us entertained other than books and our lone crew partner, all in an underground bunker about the size of your kitchen, and we couldn't leave. I mean, obviously. So I started reading a lot of books about businesses that had been around for a while. What did they do? How did they start? Well, how, how have they kept selling product for so long, even as technology changes, the generations change? How did they sell things when money was good? How did they sell things when money was bad? Those are the kinds of questions I was trying to answer. If I could boil... If I could boil everything that those businesses did, the ones that were around for a very long time, if I could boil it all down to one thing, it's that they built a business that could pivot. They got famous for selling a ton of one particular product. And then when that bubble popped, when that industry wasn't making money anymore, when, when, that pro when everybody had one of those products, they pivoted. They just changed to another product. They sold what the customer needed and wanted, not what they needed and wanted to make. They didn't get romantic about the craft. They didn't really enjoy building one type of product over another and they just get, those are the businesses that went out of business. The ones that held on for dear life to what they wanted to do and the craftsmanship, those businesses all failed long-term. But the ones that could pivot, the ones that could go from bubble to bubble to bubble after they all popped are the businesses that stuck around for a long, long time. Everybody hates bubbles. Everybody talks about, oh, this bubble's gonna pop and blah, blah, blah. The bubbles are your friend. These businesses went from bubble to 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 bubble. That's fun to say. Bubble to bubble to bubble to bubble to bubble. But these businesses went to these different bubbles and they made their money on one bubble and when it popped, they switched and they went to a different bubble and then that bubble went up and it popped and then they switched to something else. And so building a business that could pivot, the word pivot has been a buzzword for a long, long time. But what I mean is make your business to where it can just build whatever it is that week that the customers want and you will stick around long term. If we do that, if we build a business that can go from one bubble to another easily and quickly, our business is going to be around for a long, long time. Let me tell you about IBM. IBM was one of the businesses I studied and they started out as a company that built 
little jigs and hardware stuff for office workers to sort paperwork better. They started out with this folder organizer thing. I mean, this was back in the 1800s. When you think IBM, at least I think computers, I don't think office worker supplies. But from file organizers, they've since switched to computers and to software and now to artificial intelligence. But everything is under the umbrella of helping office workers do a better job. But they changed their business they changed their product line to whatever was the flavor of the week or the technological advancement of the year. And they just kept producing. And that's why IBM has been around for such a long time. They've got one mission to help office workers be more efficient, and they will build whatever products they need to in order to make that happen. Procter & Gamble, another company that just owns every brand you can imagine at the grocery store. They started as a soap and candle company. They wanted to make life a little more comfortable at home. And they've developed all sorts of products for the home. They even invented, they invented the soap opera to sell advertisements halfway through the show to, to sell product. They were the original influencers. They were the first content creators. They had this radio show of a, what they called a soap opera because they had soap commercials about halfway through to pay for the airtime and to hopefully promote the brand. So these companies were laser focused on their big picture vision for the company, but they were always flexible with what their product line was. And that is what we're copying. IBM wanted to help the office worker be more efficient. Procter & Gamble wanted to make living at home a little bit more comfortable. Samara Table Company wants to help people strengthen relationships with wooden products. So we're gonna sell whatever wooden product helps people build relationships and be together. On that same token, we have built our business on relationships with people. We don't sell on Etsy. We don't sell on Facebook Marketplace. If you buy from us, we know who you are. We know your spouse's and name. you have talked at length to me. <laughs> We're not just depending on Etsy and a good economy to provide us cash flow. We build it all ourselves with relationships, and that's much harder to start out, but the idea is that we'll be able to weather a storm much, much easier. When money gets tight, relationships are even more important in business. And what we're hoping is that by following the model of IBM, Procter & Gamble, and a bunch of other bigger companies, and maintaining those relationships during a recession, we might even see some growth. So we might even have an opportunity to see huge growth during a recession just because our product fosters relationships. We're building a business around strengthening relationships and keeping other people in business. And we're just gonna go from bubble to bubble to bubble to bubble to bubble to bubble to bubble. But only time will tell. Maybe the news is right and this is the end of the world and the only way to survive from now on will be to upload our consciousness into the metaverse. But even if that's the case, we'll just find something digital to sell. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the play.